Welcome to another episode of Light for the Journey, and I'm um, glad you stopped in tonight, and glad that you're here tonight. Have uh, a guest with me, Pastor Pete LaPaz. Welcome you to uh, to this broadcast, Pastor Pete. And um, so it's a little bit of a treat tonight, I hope. Um, I would share with you before we get started, just kind of giving people their uh, accolades. Um, Charlie Cheney is behind... Um, the uh, switches back there and has uh, a couple cameras that he's behind as well. So we're, we're grateful for Charlie for tuning in. Normally I'm trying to do all the switching and uh, it's, um, I call it a bobblehead show <laughs> when you have just one person, but trying to do it all. So tonight I'm excited as I don't have to do all this and Charlie has just made my life so much easier. Mm -hmm. And it's a joy to have you, Pastor Pete, and so just glad that you're here tonight. So things will be a little bit different tonight. We're on location uh, here in the um, gathering, what we call the gathering room in our church here at Oak Hills Wesleyan Church. And um, in this room, we, we drink coffee and we socialize before the preaching. And then there are people who come in here and catch up afterwards as well, following the worship service. And uh, just people enjoying people and God's people really enjoying the family of God. And so this room is where that all happens. And so I'm glad that we're able to show it off just a little bit tonight. And as we get going, I would share with you that um, um, our church, Oak Hills Wesleyan Church, um, Light for the Journey is actually a ministry that comes out of our church. And it is located in Rochester, Minnesota. It is cold here tonight. <laughs> this is about yeah. 7 o'clock in the evening. And it snowed some more today. I was thinking about I knew the Pastor Pete, I knew you would have your tie on and you look so great. And I was thinking about wearing my, my flannel shirt. My wife wouldn't let me get away with that. She said, you're a pastor, you have to behave yourself. So I was thinking about doing that, you know, yeah. and just sharing with people that I'm in, I'm in Rochester, Minnesota. I always wanted to go to the south. My people have reminded me that Rochester, Minnesota is in the south. Right. of Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But here we are. Um, our church is located at 410 28th Street um, in southwest Rochester. Our worship services uh, on Sunday morning, we have a, a, a Bible class, an adult Bible class that mm -hmm. meets at 930, starts at 930, and then we gather in here about 10-ish for um, some coffee and fellowship, that kind of thing. But our worship service actually starts at 1030. So if you're in the area and would like to join us, um, we invite you to, to just join us uh, on yes. Sundays at 1030. And then, Pastor Pete, you you take off at on Sundays at 320, right? 320, 320 yes. Yeah, 320. 320 in the afternoon. In the afternoon for our multicultural ministries, um, trying to reach the different cultures uh, in, in, in Rochester. So that's at 320. And then um, this happens to be Wednesday. Uh, we normally do this on Monday, but this happens to be Wednesday, and uh, and Wednesday our uh, prayer meeting is at six. Yes. So um, just share those things with you. Um, so just want to get on with it. Uh, again, this is Pastor Pete. We we've been working together. You've come on staff yes. recent in recent months uh, with a dream. I I think God is just it's actually God's dream to. Uh, to touch the lives and reach the lives uh, of the different cultures in Rochester. That's right. right. Yes, yeah. that's right. So, so you you've always been a senior pastor, right? Uh, or not? Always, uh, always been. Always been a senior pastor. Yeah. And now you're an an associate pastor. An associate pastor with a wonderful uh, <laughs> pastor, senior pastor, Pastor Carl. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and Pastor Pete is just a really sweetheart of a guy to work to work with, <laughs> yeah. and I, I so appreciate you, Pastor Pete, yes. and what you're doing here. But we have a dream. Yes. Um, actually, God has a dream, um, and Pastor Pete came through the doors. Um, share with us just a little bit about yourself. You know, how did you get to Rochester? Yes, uh, uh, my daughter Janice uh, worked in Mayo as a nurse and. Uh, and uh, new in this area, and I was in Illinois pastoring a church, Juliet Wesleyan Church, and, and Janice just uh, limited friends and uh, encouraged me to, hey, Daddy, why would not uh, move to Rochester, Minnesota? So I finally, uh, because he's the only one daughter, I, I finally decided to resign from the Juliet Wesleyan Church, and hey, last year I, I moved here. And it's a wonderful place, and 
that's why I'm here. Yeah. Re re remind me, refresh my memory, Pastor Pete. When you came here, was your daughter already pregnant with no, your grandson? No, So, so that when, happened after you moved here, right? Yeah, when I decided to, to move, and just a few weeks uh, later, uh, I've heard that my daughter Janice uh, <laughs> got pregnant. So uh, the blessing, the greatest blessing, I got my first grandson, Carter, nine months old uh, the other day. Yeah. yeah, and he's a he's a joy. He was in church last <laughs> Sunday. We had him we had him here in church, and I I was uh, I got to saw Pastor Petey. He was holding car, little Carter. Yeah, and there is nothing like having <laughs> your grandchild in church with you, isn't it? Exactly right. Yeah. Uh, it was really a precious moment uh, to see Carter in the church uh, with uh, his father Nate, uh, my son-in-law, and my. Uh, Dr. Janice, and we sat together and um, uh -huh. listening to Pastor Carl uh, preach uh, last Sunday. Well, and it was a joy. It was a joy. Yeah. It just thrilled me. And 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 folks, really, the reason why it was uh, such a joy is is that um, not since I moved to Rochester, but when I when I pastored in Fayette, Iowa, um, all of my grandchildren. I had seven at the time. I now have eight. One to be born. Um, little Anna, A Annie Ray is 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 her name. Um, but um, all seven of my grandchildren went to church with me, and I had them. You know, they, they uh, yes. my my youngest granddaughter. <laughs> she would come in, and she was at the time. You know, before, when I left there, she was about two, and she would come in, and she would do this, yes. and walk to me, <laughs> go in church, and do this, and I'd pick her up, and we'd worship together. And yes. and there is nothing, nothing on earth that can describe that that joy and that that's feeling right. of, of exactly having a right. grandchild. But anyhow, that's not what we really got on here to talk about. We could talk about grandbabies mm -hmm. forever. And any of you out there who are grandparents, you know exactly what we're talking about. Um, but really what we got on here to talk about was um, the, the dream, <coughs> excuse me, the dream that God has for Rochester, particularly um, the, uh, those of other cultures, those, those who come in from uh, other backgrounds and other countries and who have moved into Rochester. Um, and, and God cares about them. God um, obviously cares about them. And one of the things that I noticed about Rochester, um, most churches in Rochester, like mine, were, they're Caucasian, you know, uh, churches, yes. mostly not not all of them white. Not most of them mixed. Yeah. Um, I you know here we are. We're we're together. And and I know that when we get to heaven, um, that's, that's right. not how it will be. You exactly know, it, it won't right. won't be that way. And I think God is trying to make a statement. Yeah. You know uh, that He cares about the various cultures. And so here at Rochester, my heart's desire is to do everything in my power to assist you yes. to reach and achieve your heart's desire. And I think. If I got you right, your heart's desire is to please God. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So tell me a little bit about your dream then for, for this. Well, how, do you, how would you like to see this ministry? That's right. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I'm here and uh, uh, we have just started a, uh, a Bible study every 3.20 in the afternoon here mm -hmm. at Oak Hills Wesleyan Church. And uh, uh, we are so happy. If you are in the area, new in the area, moving here in Rochester, uh, I'll be glad to see you. And if you have no church affiliation and you want a church, uh, we welcome you home to our church. It's a wonderful church, and all our members here are so friendly and wonderful. And when you when you come, just few moments when you come inside the church, you are no longer uh, a guest but a friend. A friend. Yeah. It's a loving church, and uh, we intend to organize uh, an international uh, multicultural church uh, where we're in uh, all racial backgrounds, Asian, Chinese, and Vietnamese. If you want to be a part of this church, you are so welcome. Yeah. And well, last be, week, yeah, la yeah. Not last week, week before last, we, we had three ladies, all of them were from Kenya. From Kenya, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they were here. Um, they sang for us. They sang uh, in their native native tongue. Yeah. Um, so we were a tongue speaking church, of course. That, that that's was, right. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. In its truest sense. Um, but they but they sang. What was when they sang for us? It was beautiful. Yeah. Well, do you remember what the words were? Well, I, I a friend of mine, as uh, Aduk, uh, told me that uh, uh, Jesus has done so much for them. What can we 
do in return uh, to Jesus. That's right. That's right. And yes. now I remember. Yeah. Um, and then uh, in December, I, I would tell you in December, um, we had a big kickoff and there were a, a, a group of Filipinos. Yes, right. That yeah. came and we, um, I, I, I can tell you, uh, um, those of you tuned in, I just want to share with you that I am growing and developing. God is stretching me. And I think, you know, there's a big banquet table when we get to heaven, right? That's I mean, right. Do, I, do, do I read it in here, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. And so when we get to, get to the big banquet table, Pastor Pete, now at that one, we had a pig roast. Uh, <laughs> Filipinos like pig roast, right? Asians like pig roast. Like pig yeah. roast. So I, I, I experienced that, and, and our people loved it. I mean, we, we had no. such a good time. And we had, what did we have here, about 20, 22 Filipinos that, came, that had showed up? Uh, a little yes, more than something that. like yeah. that, yeah. And um, on, on that day, several of them, they, they knew we were doing a potluck, and so we had this fellowship dinner, and there was noodles and rice. Noodles and rice, yeah. yeah. But, but not, noodles, not noodles like I'm used to eating, um, <laughs> Filipino style, and I loved them. <laughs> yes. So I, I'm, I'm thinking when I get to that, to that big banquet table, I have in my, my mind's eyes all these international foods. International <laughs> food, yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, it'll be like a real smogger's board, right? That's right, that's right. <laughs> and we'll all gather around the table, but, but the, the greatest thing as we gather around the table, you know, we'll be, um, we won't be segregated. There. That's right. You know, we, 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 we are just, one. Yeah. We are one. And Jesus will be there. Yes. Yeah. And That's that'll right. be a great time. Um, well, you're from the Philippines, right? Tell us a little bit about your ministry. Well, uh, I've been, uh, my experience, I, I answered the call of God in my uh, early years. When I was 18, I started preaching the gospel uh, uh, I started uh, pastoring uh, uh, in the Philippines, the southern part of the Philippines, and my small experience, uh, my experience too, is uh, uh, church planting. Uh, several churches uh, has been planted. Uh, I remember uh, Cecil Green. Uh, we worked together, the one who led me to the Lord, and it's been a wonderful experience for me. Yes. Uh, to serve the Lord gladly yeah. until I until I arrive here in the United States, still serving the Lord, and <laughs> we are here in Rochester, ready to minister to your needs, yeah. and we are ready to be your servant, a God servant, uh, whatever your needs. If you need Bible study, if you need some uh, prayer and uh, Bible study in your home, hey, we are ready. My telephone number, cell phone number is eight one five two one two. 1355, you can call me anytime or call uh, Pastor Carl, the senior pastor here at the Oak Hills Wesleyan Church. Yeah. Hey, Charlie, I, I don't know what, what camera view you have up for, for our guests, but if you put that zero up, I think camera zero has our, um, also has, and you'll see here at the bottom, has our email address, and that, that's the church office. And, That's right. Um, so, so you have that as well, and you don't need to leave that up there the whole time, Charlie. But I just, for our, for our viewers, wanted to share that. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, what else? What else would our viewers like to know? Um, I I would tell you uh, as as far as those in Rochester and the different nationalities, what we want to do. We we realize that when we get to heaven, it'll be different. Yeah. But we know that it's far more comfortable for nationalities and people of certain ethnic groups to to congregate in and that's kind of how we're wired yes. uh, you know like interests and of course then if we you know if you come from the Philippines do you yes. like hanging with people of <laughs> Philippines and I've seen Pastor Pete with people uh, I've, as I understand people in the Philippines there how many languages are there 87 uh, dialects 87 uh, dialects yes. so in of you have to speak English to talk to each other. Is that's that, right. That's and uh, we cannot even communicate to some languages uh, from the Philippines. But uh, when we arrive here in the United States, we, if we can uh, agree, we, we can communicate through English. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have seen, uh, I've witnessed Pastor Pete. Uh, we had some Filipinos that have come into his Bible study on Sunday afternoon, and they knew his dialect. And I kept trying to tell him, you know, talk, talk together, do that, do that stuff. M mostly because we realize and recognize that that it, it, it's important to have that too, that that That's sense right. of commonality. And uh, so here at Oak Hills, what we're trying to do is. Uh, allow for that and provide for that and we want people to come in and 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 just 
worship Jesus and experience Jesus Christ. Yes. Um, you know, and to do that together, and to do that, you know, out of your background, and 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 I realize that. Um, yeah. I, I think God knows that he that that's part of walking this thing called life together. Like yes. light for the journey. Um, so there there you have it. Um, and having said that, I think you know. We, We'll go to the scriptures. I, 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 do you want me to read? or? Yes, you can read. Oh, okay. Um, we, we, we thought it would be really cool, um, and I'll do the reading then. Yeah. Um, and what we'll do, um, and I'll tell you when, Charlie, but we'll have Charlie throw the scripture up for you as I read. You can re- you'll be able to read a- along right. um, as well. But, you know, for those of you who uh, are in Rochester particularly, um, we, we just want you to know there, there's a home to come to. You know, yes. um, and I love this particular, we, we picked Luke, uh, the Gospel of Luke, and the, um, the 15th chapter, it's the, called the parable of the, uh, of the lost son. Yes. Um, we don't want anybody in Rochester who maybe not, uh, you know, from my background and my culture, yeah. but maybe of yours or Asian or African, um, this is a place, you know, you can come home to. In yeah. fact, that's one of our byline, bylines, come home to, uh, to Oak Hills. And so we're providing a place for you. But the great news is, is that, that God has done the same thing, hasn't he? He's, that's right. He, yeah. and, and when you stop and think about this, Pete, I, I'm just amazed by this, that God recognizes and realizes that there are people in Rochester who need what he's asked us to provide. What he particularly, not me, yeah. but you, has asked you to provide for them and uh, because you understand better than I. I could never do this without you. Yeah. you know? uh, and yes. we could never do this together you know, if it wasn't for Jesus, could we? That's right. That's yeah. right. That's so I couldn't right. do this without you. I'm so grateful <laughs> for you. And so we want that, okay? And so we'll share that. But before I do that, is there anything else about the ministry you would share with our well, uh, we're just, uh, we're just uh, excited, <laughs> yes, excited uh, for those uh, Asian community who would like to get in touch with the church, get in touch with Pastor Carl and me, and we are whatever your spiritual needs, and you have some question, we are ready to, we'll try our best to be of help to you. Yeah. Well, I try to help. <laughs> your, your wife, uh, we, we didn't even mention her. He, he is married, uh, a beautiful, yeah. beautiful wife, and on past shows, um, I have had a picture of her up, I think, on our second episode. That's right. And uh, Phoebe said to me, she said to me, she's Pastor Carl, you're a good Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if it's because I like your rice. Yeah. Uh, we had potluck last week, and, and Pastor Pete made rice, and, and I really liked your life. You, you make good rice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if our listeners aren't hungry, weren't yeah. hungry, they should be hungry by, by now. Yeah, yes, okay. that's right. Well, we do welcome you, and we, we just want you to know, uh, I'll read this, and then I'll let Pastor Pete make some closing comments yeah. from this scripture. Um, and... Um, and then we'll let you go. Uh, we don't want these to be long, long yeah. segments, but we'll let you go. But let me read this, um, Pastor Pete. This is starting with verse 11, uh, the parable of the lost son. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. And so he divided his property between them. I should stop here. Charlie, did you get a chance to get that? I am so sorry. Okay. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had and set off for a distant country and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country and he began to be in need. And so he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. And when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And so he got up. He went to his father. But while he was, a long, while he was still a long way off, His father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son. He threw his arms around him and he kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. 
But after the father said to his, uh, but the father said to his servants, "Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead mm -hmm. and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And so they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field, and when he came near." the house he heard music and dancing and so he called one of the servants and he asked him what's going on your father is your brother has come home he replied and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound and the older brother became angry and refused to go in and so his father went out and pleaded with him but he answered his father look all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you're always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Well, there you have the written word. Yes. Pastor Pete, what would you have to say about it's this? It's a wonderful story. And uh, it's uh, the amazing grace of God. The Father in this story is uh, representing our Heavenly Father. Yeah. Heavenly Father who is good and loving at all times. No matter what we have done or... Uh, and then the son, the prodigal son, representing the whole humanity. Uh, because of sin, I'm sorry to inform you that uh, we are lost. We are away from God. And this son is uh, spent his money in a wild living because uh, uh, he he disobeyed. He disobeyed and he wants to live in his own way. But uh, the Heavenly Father in this, uh, in this story, the Heavenly Father is longing because of his great love. He was, uh, he was always looking, when would be my son? When would I see my son coming home? Hmm. And, uh, and uh, in this story, the Heavenly Father is also waiting and longing for us to come home and just a very simple like the son and just be willing to say uh, Lord I'm ready to change uh, my conduct change my heart change my attitude I am willing to come home mm. and we have the church here Oak Hills Wesleyan Church as a home where we can experience personally the love of the Heavenly Father. I think, I think that you're right, that the Father in Heaven is longing for people in Rochester who would normally feel like they didn't have a place to go home to. Right. It's right. creating for those individuals a home. Yes. And uh, we say around here, um, as far as Oak Hills goes, one of our taglines is, yeah. Welcome Home. Yeah, and we want people to feel at home, and I think it is the Father, our Father, who is in heaven, who yeah. has put it on your heart and my heart, and 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 more importantly, the heart of our people. Um, That's our, right. Our board has hired you. We give you a, a small stipend, not not yeah. not, not a lot. Yeah. We can't afford a lot, but but we you know we just all here in Oak Hills, we all just feel that that need to to have people come home. Yes, that's know? right. And because we be honest with you, we were like that too, you know. Yeah. God welcomed us home and, and we found a we found a place and we just we want the whole world to know, not just the people of Rochester. Yeah. But but here's where we live and so we, we do that. And uh, I'm glad you guys tuned in. Thank you, Pastor Pete. Thank yes, so, uh, so it's my privilege really yeah. to be in this uh, broadcast. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Carl. Well, um, to our listeners, um, here's a, this has been a little light for the journey. Just want you to know that God is, there is no place you can go. There's nothing you can do that is too far for God to not want you to come back home. And, right. Uh, 
you know, that's good news. And that's light for the journey. Um, thanks for, for tuning in. We're glad that you, we're glad that you um, took the time out to listen to us. Um, if you if you like these things, you find them encouraging, and we hope you do. That's why we're doing them. We want right. to we want to just I encourage people and uh, be an influence, a, a shining light for Jesus. Then uh, drop us a note uh, here on uh, this winds up in YouTube, so I'm pointing yes. down below it on YouTube. Drop us a note. Let us know if you have questions for us or if there's a subject yes. you would like us to address. We certainly will. If you have questions for Pastor Pete, yeah. put them there or email us. And we'll we'll get back to you. Yeah. And uh, if you like these things, subscribe to to us. We're hoping to eventually do these things live. Hi, on yes. a certain yeah, on a certain That's night right. where you can call in if you want and yeah. ask questions live. Or we're going to set up a chat room. But that's in our future. Uh, that's to come, and we need to have so many subscribers before we can do that. That's so right. thank you for coming in. God bless you, and um, may He cause His face to shine upon you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Charlie, you can stop.